Reconnect and heal today. Welcome to Love Never Dies with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. In 1978, he began talking about patient empowerment and the choice to live fully and leave your body in peace. He's a physician who's cared for and counseled innumerable people whose mortality has been threatened by an illness. And Bernie embraces a philosophy of living and dying that stands at the forefront of the medical ethics and spiritual issues of our society today. He continues to assist in breaking new ground in the field of healing and personally struggling to live the message of kindness and love. Bernie was born in Brooklyn. He's a Colgate and Cornell University trained MD whose surgical training took place at Yale New Haven Hospital, West Haven Veterans Hospital, and the Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh. And he retired from practice as an assistant clinical professor of general and pediatric surgery at Yale in 1989 to begin speaking to patients and their caregivers. In 78, he originated Exceptional Cancer Patients, a specific form of individual and group therapy utilizing patients' drawings, dreams, images, and feelings. This ECAP method is based on carefrontation. It's a safe, loving, therapeutic confrontation which facilitates personal lifestyle changes, personal empowerment, and healing of an individual's life. The physical, spiritual, and psychological benefits which follow from this method led him to want to help everyone become aware of his or her healing potential. He's the author of such blockbusting books, Love, Medicine, Miracles. That book redirected his life. In 89, he wrote Peace, Love, and Healing. 93, How to Live Between Office Visits. 98, Prescriptions for Living. In 2003, Help Me to Heal, all about empowering patients and their caregivers. And 365, Prescriptions for the Soul. That's a children's book about how difficulties can become blessings, Smudge Bunny in 2005, 101 Exercises for the Soul, and out in the fall of 06, prescriptions for parenting book called Love, Magic, and Mud Pies. In 88, Buddy's Candle for children's, children of all ages, dealing with the loss of a loved one be it a pet or a parent. In 2009, Faith, Hope, and Healing with inspiring survivor stories and his reflections on what they teach us. And Word Swords, his poetry, and uh, it goes on and on. A Book of Miracles from 2011, 2013, The Art of Healing with 60 drawings from his patients and what they revealed. And then in 2015, Love, Animals, and Miracles, heartwarming, inspiring, and informative stories about animals, people, and life. So it's no surprise Bernie was named one of the top 20 spiritually influential living people on the planet by the Watkins Review. I could spend three hours just telling you all he's done to make our world and the universe a better place, but I'd rather just have you say hello again to my buddy Bernie. Hi, Bernie. How are you doing? Hello again. (laughs) It's so good to have you back. You're right. It just, I mean, the funniest thing is I was an artist as a child. Part of why I became a surgeon, I wanted to use my hands. Um, and the only C I got in four years of college was in creative writing. Go figure. And, yeah, and then look what happened with all these books, you know. But see, my sense of humor, I got to mention, the first book, Love, Medicine, and Miracles, became number one New York Times bestseller list. And I wrote to Colgate. I said, if you raise my grade to a B, (laughs) now that I have a bestseller, I will now be graduated alpha cum laude, you know, the highest honors, uh, instead of, you know, a lower honor grade because of the B. And I'm kidding, you know, I'm trying to make people smile. And, but I got back a serious two page letter yeah, about all the you know facts and that you cannot alter grades after graduation. Oh my goodness, how literal! I felt so bad for the people you know in the office at Colgate that they didn't pick it up, laugh, and then write me a letter with humor in it. You know, it's yeah, so true. Because you know, you talk about all the ways that you can shift your own internal physiology through laughter. You right. know, I keep thinking, yeah, I, I have what I call a child in me, who no matter where I am, what I'm doing, things come popping out of my mouth that I never decided to stay. You know, they just come flowing out. 
and people bust out laughing. And uh, often if they say, where did that come from? My wife's answer was it came from God knows where, because uh, it wasn't something I thought about saying, but it just, you know, it brought everybody together. I mean, I'll tell you, and then it, we can get into whatever you want me to talk about, but I'd get on the elevator with my wife and I have to mention, she died just about two years ago, um, quietly in her sleep at home. But um, we'd get on the elevator and I would turn to her and say, which means nothing. You know, it's my own made up foreign language. And my wife would bust out laughing because she knew I'm being a nutcase. And all the people on the elevator always were embarrassed. They knew he must be talking about me, you know, and my clothing or what I'm, how I look or... And it was so funny because as soon as my wife laughed, everybody felt, I wonder why she's laughing at me, you know? <laughs> Which is very diagnostic of, you know, hello, take nothing personally. And if you're thinking he's talking in this gibberish about you, you need your head examined, right? <laughs> now self-conscious. And the other, which is, uh, shows the sickness of doctors. I wrote a poem, I think. It started out, I got on an elevator with three doctors. How do they know... How did I know they were doctors? They didn't smile, they didn't say hello, they didn't acknowledge me. And exactly. it's so true, you know, we were at a medical conference in the hotel and you'd get on the elevator with all these doctors and nobody would say, hi, how are you, what are you doing? You know, it, it was just sad. And I would always say something on the elevator to point out to them, you know, they needed to become alive and not just exactly. fall in your head, you know, standing there. And it was so, they were so uncomfortable and it was all I, it's like a self-important thing. You know, I'm the doctor, don't, don't intrude on me. You know, I, I saw you write poems and when mm. my husband left his body, I wrote a series of poems, you know, to try to find, you know, the joy in every moment. And one morning I woke up and I said that I'm upright and dressing is a blessing. You know, and that, like little haiku poems and you find joy in every moment in every interaction. I know this about you. I'll hold something up in front of you that I found, because as I mentioned when my wife died, you know, you start cleaning up the house. This book is my journal from 1996, and I am rereading it every day. Um, the, well, let me, this is supposed to be for tomorrow. Doing, building, being a child, creating, a whole day building something for cats. Yes, I love it. It, you know, we had a house full of pets, like it, it's all in that book, uh, plus much more, Love Animals and Miracles. But I discuss our house, you know, being a zoo, because we were always rescuing animals. That was in my heart too. So veterinarians gave us creatures nobody wanted anymore. So from a fenced in yard with ducks and geese and goats to a house full of all kinds of exotic pets, skunks, you know, uh, squirrels, birds. I mean, you name it, it was in our house. It's the only house probably where people would come in and say, I saw a mouse running across your living room. I said, so what are you getting upset about? <laughs> you know, I explain, that's a pet yeah <laughs> I love that. they're all adorable did now you notice i don't say die i say left her body because mm. we don't die we just yeah, leave we... our bodies so when since your wife has left her body i know because you've said to me a few times you know she's with you Oh, does God, she, yes. Now, does she communicate with you a lot through what i call yes. the open vessels the animal uh, let me let me tell you, I, my next book, which should be coming out through Hay House in the next month or two, is called No Endings, No Beginnings. Right. Because, well, let me go back in my life, and I think it was a big part of why I did not end up being a normal doctor. At age four, I choked on a toy I put in my mouth, imitating carpenters in the house who had nails in their mouth. So I left my body. I had a near-death experience. And I thought it was something everybody knew about. So when I'm sure my angel did a Heimlich maneuver on the body. So 
And the way I always talk about it, I said, when the kid on the bed vomited, and then I thought one day, why don't you say you? And I realized, because it's not me, it's just a body. I'm not there anymore. I'm like up in, <laughs> near the roof, near the ceiling of the room. You were why that kid die? And then he vomited and started breathing again because all the pieces came out. And years later, I thought, you know, it's like a Heimlich maneuver. So it must have been an angel saying, it's not your time yet, so come back. And, uh, and I never discussed it with anybody because I thought everybody knew about it. I mean, I'm four years old. I don't know this is a weird experience. Um, I had a past life experience when somebody on the phone said to me, how busy I was. It's like saying, oh, I have to have an interview tomorrow, you know, with Jamie, and uh, I can't talk anymore. You know, I have to get ready. And she said, why are you living this life, you know, that I'm doing so many things? And I went into a trance, saw myself with a sword in my hand, killing. And as soon as I saw that, I knew I'm a surgeon helping people with a knife now. And I may add another you know, mystical experience. One of our kids, I don't know, maybe he was about eight or nine, comes home from school with this large canvas, about two feet wide and about five feet long. What does he put on it? The word words. Think about this. Words, 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 words. What do they become? Swords, 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 swords. He walked in with that it was like, wow, I can kill or cure people with words or swords. Yeah. And even his teacher at school said, why did you do that? I, I really felt when I thought about it, maybe he was part of my past life too, putting the words and swords together and being my therapist. He um, was certainly some kind of a guide. He was a very old soul yeah. and a wise guide. Yeah. yeah. He is. And uh, I see that in our grandchildren too. It is unbelievable to me because one of them sent me some stories he wrote in college, you know, like where I got to see. He's incredible what he wrote. Um, it was a story it had nothing to do with me. He's just writing it for his teacher. Uh, one was about what you believe is a person. And at the end of the story, it turns out to be a little creature running around in the yard you know, doing all these things. Um, and it's just a shock to realize this is not a farmer. It was a little, you know, creature doing all this stuff. And the other was somebody who learns he has cancer and it's an actor. He doesn't know what to do with his life uh, anymore. And he's driving on the parkway, looks down for his cell phone or something, and then looks up, realizes he's in the wrong lane. And he stays in the lane and ends his life by driving into a truck. Um, but I mean, this is from a freshman at college. It's a lot more, you know, detailed and emotional than I can, the way I say it. But when I read it, it's like, how is this coming out of some 17 year old? I mean, it's incredible. But I think it's a part of his past life that he's this sensitivity. Um, because I sent it to some literary people just to look at it coming from a teenager. And they, they also were amazed at the depth of what he had to say. But I think that when we get to know ourselves, then we understand ourselves and it makes our lives a hell of a lot better. And you know, I'm thinking also, Bernie, that because you had that near death experience, it gave you greater access to the wisdom yeah. of other realms and you've been able to dip into that from that moment on which has given you this great wisdom that many others don't tap into yeah yeah and and it again opened my mind see because i would hear from especially doctors again oh you know that's poor study or that you know it's just an anecdote i mean they don't want to believe something that i've lived and experienced even body memory. I mean, I've had such a complicated life. My, I mean, it wasn't me, but my mother was not supposed to get pregnant. She was severely hyperthyroid. And they told her, you, it might kill you to add more stress to your body. But 
her mother wanted a grandchild. So my mother did her a favor and went through hell, uh, couldn't deliver me. So, but they said to her, you're not going to survive a cesarean section. So after a week or two in labor, she said, screaming all day in the hospital, they pulled you out and they handed me a purple melon. That's a description of me as a newborn. And my parents said, well, we covered you in blankets and towels and took you home. So, you know, when they let you out of the hospital, we didn't want anybody to get upset by seeing you. And there are no pictures in the album of me, which I didn't know was because of how I looked. I thought every time I'd see a covered carriage in a picture, I was sleeping. But I said, then why, how did I survive? If nobody's touching me, I'm hidden away behind the house in the carriage. I mean, what? She said, oh, my mother took you, poured oil all over you and pushed everything back where it belonged four or five times a day. When she said that to me, I then knew I was the most loved kid on the planet. You know, I don't know why she's doing it, if you know what I mean, but we know from studies that kids who are massaged, their brain develops faster, their immune systems are better, because in the 1800s, kids died in orphanages because they, the people were told, it's like the virus that's going around now, don't touch, wear a mask, don't. So they were told, don't touch the kids because you'll spread everything. And then all the kids are dying because nobody's touching them. So, you know, they don't have any healthy body mechanisms working, so they get sick and die. And about 50 years later with a shaved head, which was another spiritual act, that I didn't understand when I shaved my head in the 1970s. But anyway, my wife and I went to our massage therapist friend and he said, you know, I'm really busy today. I can only do one of you, but my wife is a therapist. So can she do, you know, the other person? I said, fine. My wife loves, you know, you and your coarse hands. And so she'll go with you. I'll go into the room with your wife. For the first time, a woman's hands, puts oil on me and massages my infantile head, see? And I knew I went back to being an infant again. My body memories were brought forth by her hands, just like my grandmother. And it was such bliss. I mean, I couldn't believe what a wonderful feeling it was. But then I opened my eyes after a few minutes and the room was filled with people. I said, what the hell are you doing here? I'm lying here getting a massage. Her husband was standing at the foot of the uh, table. He said, I thought you had a heart attack or a stroke. We couldn't <laughs> communicate with you. You were in such bliss. I said, well, it was more than that. I said, I know, because I was an infant. I couldn't. You had left that. this moment, yeah. Yeah. You, this moment, you had like an out of body experience. You don't have That's to right. necessarily leave you could leave your body and go back in time. You can go into spirit. Right. Bernie, would, we have a couple calls. Would you like to take a call now? Would, would you be interested? <laughs> would you like that? Sure, that's okay. I mean, yeah. because we've got people or... who want to speak. And, right. uh, you know, I, we could take a call. Then we can go to a break. We have more than one person you know, on the line. Right. Whatever you'd like, go ahead. No, but I mean, Bernie, I know you and how much you love yeah, I never stopped talking, so it's no, but fine you love connecting to people, so whoever wants to connect to you and me, I figured we'll let them join the circle. Absolutely. So we have a caller from San Antonio, Texas. So let's okay. take the call from San Antonio, Texas. Hi, this is Dr. Turndorf, and you're with me and Dr. Bernie Siegel. What's your name, your first name? Hello. Hello, caller from oh, 210. Hi. I'm sorry, I didn't realize you were talking to me. I'm talking to you. Are you talking to me? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I heard San Antonio, Texas. I thought, I wonder if I know them. Yeah, well, we know you now. What's your name and what is your question or comment? Uh, my name is Kathy and I was actually just listening in on the conversation. I. Oh, you were of the question. Oh. Well, let me tell you something about Texas, because and, and related to okay. the healing, like Montana and Texas. 
I was driving through Texas for, for, with my wife. I mean, somebody was driving us, but from one lecture to another. And the car broke down. And we're in the middle of nowhere. And I'm used to, you know, growing up in Brooklyn, like being in New York. Mm -hmm. And a car pulls up, and another car pulls up. And what happened? Well, the car broke down. Oh, my brother's a mechanic. I'll get him over here to fix it. And you and your wife will come home and have dinner at my house. Now, they don't know me. We're in the middle of nowhere. But that's what's so lovely about ha that happening in Texas or Montana. They know they need to help you because you're not going to have 500 more cars come by, you know, to help you. So it's that relationship. You're like all family in a I minute. Love that. Yeah. Bert, can you believe I took our caller? from texas right on the cusp of us having to go to a break all right so, so kathy i think you said we're thinking you were just watching and listening in you didn't have a question and perhaps our engineer thought you did we're going to take a break and if you decide that you have a question when we come back then bob will put you back on and if you don't have a question okay. We'll just say it was lovely meeting you. And we'll be back in a moment on Love Never Dies Radio and Dr. Turner Turn up you love the question. When we come Thank back, you. we'll put you back on. And if you don't have a question, okay. we'll just say it was lovely meeting you. And we'll be back in a moment on Love Never Dies Radio and Dr. Turner Turn up you love the question. Hi, it's Dr. Jamie Turndorf here, and I have a question for you. Are you or someone you love a veteran suffering from undiagnosed PTSD? According to statistics, between 100 and 200,000 vets suffer PTSD. But did you know that there's an arbitrary diagnostic loophole that denies the PTSD diagnosis to vets who suffer a coexisting mental health disorder? Meanwhile, according to the British Psychiatric Journal, it is rare for vets to suffer PTSD without a coexisting mental health disorder. This means that millions of vets with PTSD don't even know they have it and aren't getting treatment for it. Read my new column, Winning the War on PTSD, in mastersofhealthmag.com and discover a cutting-edge, research-backed new solution to PTSD that you've never heard about. The exciting news is this solution is free for vets with PTSD. Go to mastersofhealthmag.com, take my free PTSD quiz right away, and start your healing journey today. Wishing you all the love in this world and beyond. I'm Dr. Jamie Turndorf. Love Never Dies is now on the Dream Vision 7 radio network every Wednesday and Thursday at 1 p.m. and 1 a.m. Eastern Time. Dr. Jamie Turndorf, also known as Dr. Love, is the number one international best-selling author of Love Never Dies, How to Reconnect and Make Peace with the Deceased. If you're grieving the loss of a loved one, tune in and find out how to reconnect and heal any unfinished business using Dr. Turndorf's groundbreaking new Dialoguing with the Departed technique. Visit AskDrLove.com to find out more. This is Dream Vision 7 Radio Network, uniting mankind with universal love. Our shows are created from the heart, bringing each listener to a place of divine enlightenment. Breathe, relax, and enjoy. Let life flow. You're listening to Love Never Dies with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. If you yearn to get along better with your life partner or spouse, friends, family members, and even co-workers, Dr. Turndorf's book, Kiss Your Fights Goodbye, Dr. Love's 10 Simple Steps to Cooling Conflict and Rekindling Your Relationship shows you how to turn conflict into connection for a lifetime of lasting love. Find out more about Kiss Your Fights Goodbye at AskDrLove.com. This is Love Never Dies with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. This show is for you, the listener. Once again, here's Dr. Turndorf. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Love Never Dies Radio on Dream Vision 7 Radio Network and Dr. Turndorf, Turn on the Love on Binge Network Television. Bernie, 
Are you all right? <laughs> <laughs> we were underwater there for a while. <laughs> well, I always tell people, don't ask, how are you today? <laughs> you know, I say, tell I, me I'm looking better than usual. You know, you know, because I get so tired of people saying, how are you doing? Who don't really care. They you know what I mean? They don't, they don't give two, two, two craps about it. Right. After John right. left his body, someone said, how are you? I said, I'm really crappy. And they said, that's nice, and walked off. Yeah. But let me add this. Something, because you mentioned about my wife. Yes, we communicate still, even though it's two years. And what I mean by that is I'm not psychotic and neurotic. Um, when my mother died many years ago, I started finding pennies in, I mean, in like 20, 30 pennies in crazy places. See, and what was interesting is I'd go to the mailbox, find them on the way back up the driveway. They weren't there before. Pennies. And I said pennies. this one day to the family who were, were outside the house. I said, this is incredible. And this little pipsqueak, a grandchild said, they're pennies from heaven. It blew my mind. What's coming out of that kid's mouth? It's like, who put that in him? You know, pennies from heaven. And as far as he's concerned, grandma's leaving them. Well, my wife dies. She was born on 9-9. Just so people know, certain numbers. And we were married on 7-11. Um, I go shopping. And as I'm walking back towards the checkout, I hear a voice say, go in the first aisle. So I turn right into that. And right on the belt, you know, that carries your produce off after you, you know, flash them and, and uh, the price goes on your thing. Um, there was a dime and a penny twice lying on the belt. Now, how the hell did they get there? How did they even stay there if it's on a belt? Um, another time, and this has happened five or six times with that specific number. I walked out of the house and the voice said, and I hear voices. So people, I'm not psychotic. It's now, like do, you my hear, do you hear it audibly or do you hear it as a thought in your head? Oh, I hear it. Okay. And it said, go clean the bird bath. I walk over to it, it's filled with leaves, because we live in the woods, and dirty water. So I tip it up and pour it out. It's a bird bath I had made out of a satellite dish. So I tip it over. What's in the bottom? A dime and a penny. How the hell did that get in there? The 11 again. And I you know, found them walking the dog. Uh, I mean, incredible. Pennies even in the house. You know, you're sitting in a chair in the house, there's nothing on the floor in front of you. An hour later, you look down and there's a penny there. You know, I, mm -hmm. I have described that same experience again and again in Love Never Dies. Mm -hmm. I uh, had a patient come into my office. Her name was, well, I can't even remember what her name was. I mentioned it in the book. She, I said, this is the anniversary week of Jean's bodily departure. You know, I'm doing a paradigm shift on how we speak about quote unquote death and dying. Anniversary is the day they're birthed into the spirit body. So I said, he's sending me a lot of messages and signs and a lot of coins. And she said, that's funny you mentioned that because, you know, yesterday my cowboy boot was off in my bedroom when a quarter materialized out of thin air and dropped into my boot. And I received the message, it was for you. And she said, let me give it to you now. And as she turns her boot over, I hear my husband say, you will see the quarter was minted on the year we were married. And sure yeah. enough, she hands it to me and that was the case. Right. So the date, you see, you're very tuned in. So you notice that the date oh, is- Oh yeah, well, I'm gonna tell you about numbers in a minute. But one other thing that really fascinated me in, in the bedroom, before I get up in the morning, uh, I would hear, what we hear if you're going to blow out a candle. <sighs> yeah. And then I felt a breeze on my face. She's blowing you kisses. Yeah, she's giving me a kiss. I mean, there, there's, you know, I'm not psychotic. There's no explanation for it. And I'm still two years later. Well, one night I hear her in bed. 
you know, I try to describe it in the sense, like if you're going to turn over in bed, you might go, um, you know, make a little sound as you turned. And one night I even sat up and said, do you need any help? And then I thought, hey, stupid, your wife is dead. <laughs> but that sound, isn't. That's I just point. reacted to it. She isn't dead. She's just not. Well, no, body. but I mean, her body isn't there because I'm not sitting up saying, do you need any help? Yeah. So there were the kisses, the pennies, and then this was interesting. What part of my body do you think had a medical problem about nine months after she died? You really want me to guess? Yeah. You talk about love. But so you had, you had something with your heart? Right. Of course. My heart rhythm went crazy. Of course. So I had to go to the emergency room. And as I said, she was born on 9-9. I walk in the emergency room, I hear a voice, put him in room nine. The next morning they said, we have a hospital room for you now. You can go upstairs. What room is it? 819. See? And eight is a new beginning. So that I knew that meant I'm going to be fine. And eight and one equals nine. And they equal nine, yeah. Then I look at my wristband you get two strips of numbers. One is you, identifying you. The other is like your case, your visit number. What do you think my hospital number is? 996633, all nines. And the other also added up to nine. It might be 2727, right. you know, 6111. Right. But I mean, I, I've, I've kept them all. They're in, <laughs> you know, on the top sure. of the, the toilet, on the counter. The, every single one added up to nine, except one day. I looked down, because I said to a nurse, oh, they're all going to add up to nine. Because I was, it was a doctor visit, so I was getting a new band. And I looked, I said, oh, the visit number isn't nine. Then when I had time, it was 7 -11. That's what it added up to, our anniversary. So it might have been like in the summertime when we were married in July, you know, and so my wife switched to that one once. But it, it's just absolutely incredible. I have her pictures everywhere in the house, and I just keep talking to her. Um, you know, we're still together. Sure, I miss her, you know. Um, you know, Bernie, one day I'm going to have to put you into the uh, meditation for making contact and help you because what, one of the things I do when I help people to reconnect is I literally help them not only just talk to the person, but ha learn how to hear what the other is saying back. And you can actually physically be with her. Because people always start out, I miss you physically. But when you do this trance, you don't even miss her physically. Many of my, uh, my women and my coaches, they make love to their partners in spirit. Mm. They feel the physical body. The, yeah, I hear, I've been hearing voices for decades. The day yeah. my father picked to die, a voice said to me, how did your parents meet? I said, I don't know. And the voice said, well, then ask your mother when you get to the hospital. Yeah. That changed his death into one of the funniest, happiest days we've ever had. He died laughing. The reason was I walked into the hospital. And again, it's like my angel is talking. I mean, I'm walking in, my father's dying, my mother's sitting with him. My first thought is give everybody a hug, say I love you. But out of my mouth came, how did you two meet? And then I was going to apologize for not being more loving. But my mother immediately answered me. And the, the punchline was, she said, I was with girls I didn't know who had a bad reputation. Boys came down the beach. They flipped the coin. Your father lost and got me. And then she started telling more dates they had, which I have no idea why she kept going out with him because everything was a disaster. You know, uh, they were going to go rowing in a boat and the guy yelled, you didn't pay me. So my father let go of my mother in the boat and she fell in the lake. I mean, it was, and he looked so wonderful when he died that everybody in the room was filled with love and, you know, and joy. Uh, and again, the little grandchildren were saying, is this what death is like? Because it was one of the nicest days they ever had. Yeah. But it's so true. 
And I have to say, even, I didn't think of these things till later. Our phone number is 203, is the, and we had twins and three boys. 387, we were married 711. And then 6633-99, that's the phone number in the house. I probably shouldn't say that, you know, out in public. But everywhere I looked, our whole, you know, from the mailbox number to the phone number, to, everything always seemed to be symbolic. And uh, you notice. So I know she's with me. And, uh, you know, I keep talking to her. And when I want advice and guidance, I ask her to help. And, and then you hear her voice come back or you hear, you hear a thought in your head? It, I'd say it's more the thought. Well, let me give you an example. I said to her, I need a new pair of gloves. This was, you know, last winter. Because um, these gloves have holes in the fingers and it, it's just not working. I need a new pair of gloves. I go into stop and shop, park my car, come out right by the driver's door or a pair of gloves on the ground. Now, the car that was there when I parked is still there. You know what I mean? So you can't say to me, well, maybe somebody dropped the gloves when they got in their car. Right. I mean, so it's, yeah. You know, my husband does Eiffel Towers because we were, we were honeymooning in Paris and our hotel overlooked the Eiffel Tower. So he always manifests out of the clear blue Eiffel Towers. And these mm -hmm. new friends that I have went bike riding and they took their bikes out of a closed cage in the garage of their condo in Sunny Isles, Florida. And when they came back on the ground was an Eiffel Tower mm. keychain. It wasn't there before. Right. You know? So the, mm. the manifestations have meaning for you. You know, it has to have a symbolic meaning. He sent me once to um, Connecticut to um, an antique shop two hours from where I was living in Millbrook. He said, I want you to get something. And I drove into this antique shop and he leads me to a pair of Eiffel Tower earrings wow. that were obviously made in the yeah. Victorian era, era, the year that the, and I'm like, dude, this is a lovely manifestation, but this is an expensive manifestation. Right. Like, you gotta buy it, buy it, buy it. So I, oh, I uh, well, I gotta tell you, when I'm putting a burden on my wife. But, I mean, our kids thought I was nuts. You know, when I'd start telling them about what happened in the bedroom or, you know, all the coins. But they were changed because it started happening to them. You know what I mean? Absolutely. They started having unique experiences. Bernie, uh, you want to hold the thought because I've got to take a break. And I, right. I don't want us to have to... Uh, yeah, I hope I almost forgot what I was going to say. So I know, but hold it because I'll, I'll say. I'll try to remember. <laughs> I'll, I'll remind you. All when right, we'll be back in a moment because I know what you were going to say. I'll be back with you in a moment on Love Never Dies Radio on Dream Vision Seven Radio Network and Doctor Turndorf Turn on the Love on Binge Networks Television. Hi, it's Dr. Jamie Turndorf here, and I have a question for you. Are you or someone you love a veteran suffering from undiagnosed PTSD? According to statistics, between 100 and 200,000 vets suffer PTSD. But did you know that there's an arbitrary diagnostic loophole that denies the PTSD diagnosis to vets who suffer a coexisting mental health disorder? Meanwhile, according to the British Psychiatric Journal, it is rare for vets to suffer PTSD without a coexisting mental health disorder. This means that millions of vets with PTSD don't even know they have it and aren't getting treatment for it. Read my new column, Winning the War on PTSD, in mastersofhealthmag.com and discover a cutting-edge, research-backed new solution to PTSD that you've never heard about. The exciting news is this solution is free for vets with PTSD. Go to mastersofhealthmag.com, take my free PTSD quiz right away, and start your healing journey today. Wishing you all the love in this world and beyond. I'm Dr. Jamie Turndorf.
Love Never Dies is now on the Dream Vision 7 radio network every Wednesday and Thursday at 1 p.m. and 1 a.m. Eastern Time. Dr. Jamie Turndorf, also known as Dr. Love, is the number one international best-selling author of Love Never Dies, How to Reconnect and Make Peace with the Deceased. If you're grieving the loss of a loved one, tune in and find out how to reconnect and heal any unfinished business using Dr. Turndorf's groundbreaking new Dialoguing with the Departed technique. Visit AskDrLove.com to find out more. This is Dream Vision 7 Radio Network, uniting mankind with universal love. Our shows are created from the heart, bringing each listener to a place of divine enlightenment. Breathe, relax, and enjoy. Let life flow. You're listening to Love Never Dies with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. If you can't stop crying over the bodily loss of a loved one, Dr. Turndorf's number one international bestseller, Love Never Dies, How to Reconnect and Make Peace with the Deceased, will show you how to toss out the tissues and transform your grief into joy using her groundbreaking new Dialoguing with the Departed technique that enables you to reconnect and even heal unfinished business with those in spirit without the assistance of a medium, channeler, or psychic. Sign up for Dr. Love's free newsletter at AskDrLove.com and receive an exciting gift, a free excerpt of Love Never Dies. And now, back to Love Never Dies with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. Hello again and welcome back to Love Never Dies Radio on Dream Vision 7 Radio Network and Dr. Turndorf Turn on the Love on Binge Network's television. Bernie, I promised I was going to help you remember what you were going to say you started to say your kids didn't believe at first all about these spirit manifestations, but then something happened to one of your kids and he became a believer. That's pretty much what you're oh, about. I, I think they began to find pennies, um, just unique little experiences that like we're talking about. So they were convinced when they had something happen, then it wasn't, oh, dad is telling us he found another penny. Right, exactly. They started sending me emails about the crazy things that were happening to them. Exactly. So they all did. Um, you wanted to and I got, Oh, and you talked about Dr. Love. That's a license plate I have, MD Love, because um, I am a doctor and the love, yeah. So that affects people too. You and I have a lot in common, there's no doubt. Bernie, did you hear when we were in a break, I heard a woman's voice saying, Jamie, can you hear me? Did you hear that, Bernie? Not was that this time, no. Because I want to know if that was a spirit manifestation because I don't think, I mean, when I'm on Zoom and I'm doing coaches training, we see spirits, we hear my husband speaking. So I don't know if that was a spirit because my engineer mutes everybody who's watching and listening. And I heard a voice say, Jamie, can you hear me? I uh, heard it early on. I thought it was the person who had been on who didn't stop talking. Maybe she wasn't muted yet. I don't know. Okay, so is, I'm asking my engineer, is there someone else who wanted to speak with us who was trying to get through, Bob? Yeah, Jamie, I've got somebody calling from 469. All right, so, and this is a real person who has a question and would like to speak to me and Bernie. Okay, so come on in, 469, speaking of numbers. <laughs> hi, Jamie and Bernie, this is Dee from Texas. Dee, hi. Yeah, right. Hi. Yes, I unmuted myself during your commercial and I said, Jamie, can you hear me? Because I wasn't sure if I, there was a way to raise my hand to know if I could come on and, um, and ask a question or actually, yeah, I don't have a specific question as much as I wanted to say to, to Dr. Bernie, I read your book, Love, Medicine and Miracles, um, shortly after my mother passed away, right after when it was on the New York Times bestseller list. So that's been so many years ago. Mm. But I wanted to thank you because it was life changing. It is the first um, experience I had or the knowing that your thoughts and your emotions could produce disease in the body. And I decided then and there I would not manifest cancer the way my mother did. And so it's just been life changing. And I just wanted to thank you. Well, you're life changing. It's just my words, you see, because there are people, mm. I can hold up a magazine for you to look at. I'm on the cover. 
This is from the time you were reading the book, and it says the controversial, you know, doctors see love, you know, that kind of thing. That mm -hmm. I'm crazy. What difference does it make? What you're feeling? What I mean, I mean now there's the science, science behind it. How, how it affects your genes. I always say Monday morning we have more heart attacks, strokes, suicides, and illnesses. So it's obvious how you feel on Monday, you know, affects your life and your health. And I also learned that when people didn't die when they were supposed to, they also had a wonderful story to tell me, you know, about what they did. And that's why they didn't die. They weren't trying not to die. That's the point that always made me clear. They would quit their job that their parents wanted them to be a lawyer. And he gets a job in playing a violin, which he wanted to do with his life, and they wouldn't let him. They, and then he doesn't die. You move to Colorado to be in the mountains. Because he said to me, I'm going to Colorado to die in the mountains. It's beautiful. I said to the family, make sure you call me when he dies. I'll come for the funeral because I feel very close to him. A year goes by, no phone call. So I call up quite angry at the family. And guess who answers the phone? And he said, oh, it was so beautiful here. I forgot to die. And, and I mean, I can, you know, you know take, take up, up the whole rest of the program, program with those kinds of stories. And that's, and that's why I felt doing the support groups, helping people eliminate, eliminate what's killing you. You, you see, see, all the things they carried with them. them. And, and one, one other wonderful, wonderful little clue. If, if you have, have a problem in your life, physical, physical mental, mental, emotional, it doesn't matter what. What, what word would you use to describe it? And two examples. Lady, lady about, about to be admitted to the hospital with severe pain. pain. What, what does it feel like? Pressure. Incredible, Incredible pressure. pressure. So, so I, I did a meditation with her to relieve the pressure, pressure. without saying anything more than that. Um, but but getting her to think about what pressures exist in your life, life rather than saying to her, okay, what's the pressure in your life? life? And, and I, I left her, her after, after the meditation, meditation and, and a few minutes later, later the nurse ran, ran over and said, oh, it's, it's her marriage. marriage. Her pain is gone, and she's going home to fix her marriage. marriage. Another lady mm. was dealing with cancer. I said, what's it like? Failure. I said, I said how does failure, failure fit your life? Well, well my, my body, body failed. failed. I said, that's, that's not my question. question. Oh, oh, my parents committed suicide when I was a child. child. I must have been a failure as a child. And there are times people will come up with a word, look, look at me and say, say thank, thank you. you. I mean, I mean they, they don't, don't even want to need, need to go further. further. They know they damn well what, what that word means to them. them. And, and so, so off they, they go to work on it. it. I mean, I mean it, it helped me too when I was having vertigo and a lot of dizzy spells. And I thought, all right, what am I going through? Well, the world is spinning around. I thought, yeah. It's, it's trying, trying to get you to take it easy and slow down. down. And, and I, I thought, thought it was such a, a wonderful problem because, because what do you do if you're dizzy? You, you lie down. And, and it was getting me to rest, rest and take care of myself. And once I did that, I didn't have to be dizzy anymore. Yep, yep. exactly. It's, it's the body speak, speak body poetry. poetry. Yeah. yeah. So, Dee, thank, thank you for your call. Thank, thank you so, so much. It was good to hear your voice. voice. We're, We're going to have to think. figure out how to let people who are in queue. Oh, let me, can I interrupt you for a minute? There's a couple of things, because you talk I about tell love. You to speak. I'll tell you so you can pace yourself, Bernie. All right. We've got six minutes left. I, I'm just uh, giving, you know, I'm here for you and whatever. Yeah, you no, that's, that's plenty. I just, another minute, so to speak, because you're talking about love. Love is immortal. The only thing that is. And there, the two books where it says it so beautifully, one is The Human Comedy by William Soroyan. I suggest everybody read it. It was a movie many years ago, but it's about life and loss because it's during World War II and so forth. But this line, um, the best part of a good man stays forever. You'll see him in the streets and the houses and all the things that are here out of love and for love. For love is immortal and makes all things immortal while hate dies every minute. The last part was edited out with subsequent copies of the book. But William Soroyan, uh, The Human Comedy. You want to learn about life. 
And the other is uh, The Bridge of San Luis Rey. Um, I forgot the author. But the people are on the bridge, and it breaks, and they all fall and die. Now, you see, you could say, believe me, there are so-called spiritual leaders who say, okay, they must have been sinners, so God broke the bridge while they were on it. You know, uh, why did God give them cancer? That sort of thing. I mean, Billy Graham in his newspaper column, a man wrote him and said, does God want me to have cancer? I mean, my response when I'm reading it was no. His was not necessarily. I thought, what are you talking about? Well, maybe God will give you cancer because you don't pay attention to God anymore. You don't show up in church. Now you got a problem, you'll come back. I mean, that's sick and just guilt laden. But anyway, at the end of the book, Thornton Wilder, that's who wrote it. It says, and we ourselves shall be loved for a while and forgotten, but the love will have been enough. All those impulses of love return to the love that made them. Even memory is not necessary for love. There's a land of the living and the land of the dead, and the bridge is love, the only survival, the only meaning. And I always say to people, you want to live forever? Love somebody. And keep loving, right? Not yeah. just love them in a memory, but keep loving. Absolutely. Right. Love is, your, is, is eternal, and we are eternal. You know, what it became, I realized with our marriage, I mean, my wife and I had an incredible loving marriage. I mean, it just unbelievable that we became one person. Um, and we never needed anything, I realized, except each other. I know. You know what I mean? Like, like one night we were sitting in the kitchen and I thought, I, I feel so complete just sitting in a kitchen. Yeah. You know, we don't need vacations. We don't need to travel. We don't need to this. We don't need to go out. We have everything. We're sitting here together. That's beautiful. And one of the poems I wrote, because <laughs> you know what women bring with them when they travel, everything that isn't nailed down, you know. So we're going all around the world, and our luggage was, ay, 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 just to get it on a plane. And, um, but then one time when I'm traveling, she said, honey, I can't go this time. I, I want to take it easy and be home. So off I go. And that's when I realized a heavy, you know, a, a sad heart was heavier than her luggage. Hell yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. When she Perfect. wasn't with me. It was how harder. fast our time has gone. We only have one minute left. I All can't right. even believe it. You know, the thing is, when we get together, we just sort of schmooze is what yeah. we do. And well, that's lovely. The best thing that you can do is do things that make you lose track of time because you don't get older when you're doing those things and your body is as healthy as it can ever be. I mean that from personal experience. You know what I think when you're out of time, it's because you're not in your body. You're in spirit where there is no time. That's right, where there is no time. There is no time. So, Bernie, in one minute, your parting thought before we say goodbye. I know I'm going to be visiting you on your show in a week, but just one parting. No, my thought is to love yourself because I've seen the benefits of that. You know, as one young woman said, I had polio as a child. I hated my body. Then I developed another neurological disease. I'm lying here, my body. I'm, but she said, I don't want to die hating my body. Yeah. So she took off all her clothes lay naked in front of a mirror and said, I started loving myself from the toes up, inch by inch. Yep. Guess what? Her disease went into remission oh, that is so and she true. didn't die. And so, so love uh, yourself. You don't yeah. have to like everything, but love yourself. Absolutely, Bernie. You know, and you know, when I take off my bra, I have to shout timber. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I say I love because every part of my body and all of its flaws, it's a roadmap of everything I've been through, the struggles I've triumphed over. And so, Bernie, I just loved having you. Thank you. I just really look forward when we visit. I'll see you on your show. I love you. You help everyone live love now. So I'm not going to say goodbye. I'll just say see you soon. Okay. Next time. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.
This is Dream Vision 7 Radio Network, uniting mankind with universal love. Our shows are created from the heart, bringing each listener to a place of divine enlightenment. Breathe, relax, and enjoy. Let life flow. (laughs) 